Welcome to another episode of Eric Witt Whiskey Studies. In this video, gonna do a review of the West Cork Single Malt Irish Whiskey. This is from the Glen Gariff series. It's a peated charred cask whiskey. Now, one of the principles that I've come to conclusion on uh, regarding whiskeys and doing whiskey reviews is don't judge a whiskey by a neck pour. While there are some articles and perhaps even some whiskey tubers who negate this, my experience is whiskeys need time to open up to fully express themselves, as do wines. And oftentimes, it, you will get uh, more after it has had more oxygen in terms of uh, its expression of character, but also some of the components of the whiskey, the aromas and flair, flavors, will become much more integrated. When I first tried this whiskey, when I had a neck pour, even the next glass, I wasn't real thrilled with this whiskey and had basically written it off. But let me, before I get into this, let me tell you a little bit more about this whiskey. The West Cork Single Malt Irish Whiskey Glen Gareth Series Peated Charred Cask it's made at West Cork Distillers from 100% malted barley. It's a non-age statement, aged at least three years. It was aged in ex-sherry and ex-bourbon casks that were charred with peat. It's bottled at 43% alcohol by volume and sells for anywhere between $38 and $44. Now, one of the things you may have noticed from my notes is uh, this is not made from peated barley, nor is this a whiskey that was aged in a cask that previously contained uh, a peated whiskey, like Glen Levitt's Nadera peated cask whiskey. Rather, they took the peat and peated the cask and then put the spirit into the cask. I don't know of another whiskey that has taken this approach. Now, when I first tried this whiskey, and actually, I, until it got all the way down to the shoulder, uh, this character of the whiskey was uh, sort of like a stick of bubble gum from baseball cards or football cards, that sort of thin cardboard piece of gum that's covered in powdered sugar. That's exactly what this whiskey was like. It was not offensive. It was just very, very strange. Now, I had almost written this whiskey off as a complete dud. But I remember that principle about not judging a whiskey by a neck pour, so I was patient with the whiskey and waited a little while before doing my review. And I was very glad that I did. When I came back to the whiskey and I'd gotten it down to about to where the label is at, I found that it had really opened up really, really nice. Uh, a lot of the components have uh, really become uh, more, much more intermingled and intertwined. And that sort of weird uh, powdered sugar bubblegum character completely went away. So what do I get on it now? This whiskey has a lot of dark chocolate and a mint character, sort of like a York's peppermint patty. York peppermint patty, get the sensation of York's dark, rich chocolate covering a cool, crisp mint center. I get a little bit of lemon and lime and green apple character, a little bit of vanilla and some fudge, but that's about it. So it's mostly a minty dark chocolate, a little bit of a green apple character and some lemon and lime character. On the palate. One more. So it's mostly sweet up front into the middle, dries a little bit on the back end. What you get up front is that green apple, lemon and lime character, about the mid palate, that chocolate uh, kicks in. And on the back end, most I get is more of a bitter chocolate, maybe a little bit of fudge. And the whole thing from front into the middle, into the finish is surrounded by smoke. Right now, there is a nice balance between the fruit minty character and the nice chocolate and peaty character. They're playing together really, really, really nice. And what lingers, in fact, I'm still tasting it now, is that dark chocolate minty character. York peppermint patty, get the sensation. When I eat a York peppermint patty, I get the sensation of a cool breeze billowing through my hair and across my long white dress. Oh, 
Oh. York Peppermint Patty, get the sensation from Peter Paul. The mouthfeel is a little bit thin, but it has a really nice, long, sort of refreshing minty character. I've come to really like this whiskey. I'm glad that I did not judge it based on the neck pour or even to, you know above the shoulders. It's just a whiskey that takes a little bit of patience. Not unlike the Lafroy 10. The Lafroy 10 is much more medicinal and smoky and, and oceanic in your face when you first get into it. And it takes a little bit of patience to get some different characteristics out of it. Uh, it same approach with this whiskey. Uh, now texture wise, it's a little thin, it's a little watery, but you know, it's only, you know, 43% alcohol by volume. Now, quality price wise, uh, the Ardbeg Wee Beastie goes for about $45, which is what the price used to be for the Ardbeg 10. The Ardbeg 10 has moved up to about $55. This is at around $42. So it's cheaper than the Ardbeg Wee Beastie. Now, if I were to compare them side by side, I do prefer the Ardbeg Wee Beastie over this one, although this is youthful in character. It's not, doesn't have that sort of new make character to it as the Wee Beastie does. But the Wee Beastie has a lot of other components to it that I really, really like. So I prefer the Ardbeg Wee Beastie over this, but this is a little cheaper. And of course, the Ardbeg 10 blows both of these whiskeys away. As I've said many, many other times, the Ardbeg 10 is one of the highest quality price whiskeys, period. So would I recommend this whiskey? Number one, if you are a peat fan and you want to try a whiskey that is doing peat in a completely different uh, fashion, just for that experience alone, just to see what does a peated charred cask whiskey uh, come across like, I think it's worth checking out for that much. If you're a peat fan uh, and you like those sort of dark chocolate minty characteristics, another reason to buy this whiskey. Price-wise, I think this is much more of a $35 play. I think the $42 a play uh, is gonna make it challenging when you have uh, whiskeys that are better than this uh, coming from Isla. Uh, it's, just, it's just not gonna be able to compete with the Ardbegui Beastie. So if you're just looking into uh, just a peat character a whiskey, a high peat character whiskey, yeah, I would recommend probably going with the uh, Wee Beastie uh, five-year-old from Ardbeg or the Ardbeg 10 over this whiskey. That being said, I have no regrets over buying this whiskey. I'm glad that I do. And I think it's really, really interesting. And I'm wondering if other producers are gonna take a similar approach in peat charring a cask rather than uh, peating uh, the barley. I think it's just a really, really interesting approach. You know, the Glenlivet uh, Nadura peated cask is another interesting approach in which you take a, a cask that previously contained uh, a peated whiskey and then you add your spirit to it. That's an absolutely fantastic whiskey. But that whiskey is over 60% alcohol by volume, um, no non-chill full dirt, no added coloring. And I think it's that extra oomph of the ABV that really delivers those characteristics really, really well, as well as really penetrating the cask and bringing that peat character out of the uh, cask that previously, previously contained uh, peated whiskey. So, uh, and that whiskey is over $70. So price-wise, it's much more uh, uh, than this one. So that being said, what I've given in terms of a score, I'm gonna go a solid, I'm gonna go like an 85 points, an 85 points. Uh, if I was judging it, according to how it was from the neck pour, I probably would have been around 80 points. Uh, it, not until it really opens up and everything becomes really integrated does it really show its best and show that it really is a whiskey worth checking out. Alrighty, if you like watching my videos but you've not yet subscribed, I suggest you subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when I go live or post a new video. And if you are one of my Patreon supporters, I want to thank you very much for supporting this channel. And until next time, cheers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.